We're here with the June Ought 8 exam. We're on to page 5. We'll start with question 22. An electron is located in the plates in the electric field between two parallel metal plates as shown in the diagram. Okay, there's an electron which is negatively charged. The electron is attracted to plate A. Electrons moving towards plate A, making this positive. Now electric fields are uh, plotted uh, as though you put a positive test charge in the field. If it was a magnetic field, you'd use a north monopole. So here we go. So the electron is moving towards the positive. Okay. If the electron is attracted to plate A, then the plate A is charged. A okay, two-part question. So we believe the plate A is charged positively. So one, two, can't be three or four. That's because you're negative. And the electric field is directed from plate A towards plate B. That's the correct answer. Question 23. A potential difference of 10 volts exists between two points, A and B, within an electric field. What is the magnitude of charge, Q, that requires 2 times 10 to the negative joules of work to move it from A to B? W equals 2 times 10 to the negative 2 joules. And if you forgot that Q is charge, you can find it on your formula sheet. Q is charge. So we've got uh, v, w, and q, and there we go. v is equal to w over q. v equals w over q. So get w by itself, multiply by q, v, q is equal to w. Oh, we want q. So w divided by v is q. So a 2 times 10 to the negative 2 joules divided by 10 volts. Looks like 2 times 10 to the negative 3. And uh, coulombs is the unit. Question 24. A circuit consists of a resistor and a battery. Increasing the voltage of the battery while keeping the temperature the same uh, would result in an increase of well, there's a formula that deals with voltage, current, and resistance. R equals V over I. Resistance equals voltage divided by current. And uh, we're going to keep the temperature of the circuit constant. Now, the only way I can figure they're doing that is by keeping the resistance content, constant. Because uh, if the temperature would increase, then the resistance would increase. So I'm going to have to say that... Uh, if the voltage were to increase, let's see how that affects current. Current is equal to voltage divided by resistance. If resistance is a constant, the voltage goes up, the current goes up. So I'm going to go with current only. And though in actual circuits, uh, even the temperature of the circuit constant is a little tricky. 25. Vocabulary. The time required for a wave to complete one full cycle is called the wave's period. Period is measured uh, in units of time, your class period or something like that. It's always a time unit. An electromagnetic AM band radio. I remember those. AM band radios. They might not be able to keep asking these questions too much longer. Everybody goes digital. At any rate, on your formula sheet, you've got the electromagnetic spectrum, all of them, uh, from gamma rays up here down to microwaves, TV, FM, AM, radio waves, long radio waves. And uh, you could have a wavelength. So AM has wave, has frequencies. The bottom of the chart is the frequency. Top of the chart is wavelength. So we're looking at uh, 10 to the 3, 10 to the, 10 to the 2. So uh, that's about halfway between 100 and 1,000. 
Uh, so I'm going with, uh, I gotta go with that one. Right. Question 27. Uh, the diagram represents a transverse wave, an up and down wave. All right. This distance here is an amplitude. This distance here is also an amplitude. If this was a, a light wave, that would make it brighter, brighter amplitude. From that point, half a wavelength, we go through 360 degrees of phase angle. That's a full wavelength. All right. So this would be a wavelength from here to here. Now we're there. Okay. The wavelength of the wave is equal to the distance between points. Okay, so they're asking us specifically about wavelength. So A to E would be a wavelength. B to F would be a wavelength, and C to G would also be a wavelength. Let's see what choice they're going to give us here. A to G, nope. B and F, yep. C and E, half a wavelength. D and F, don't even know what that is. Okay, question 28. When a light wave enters a new medium and it's refracted, there must be a change in the light waves. This is an interesting kind of question. Uh, frequency and period are inversely proportional. Period is 1 over frequency. So if you were to change the frequency, you would also change the period. Therefore, neither one of them can be the correct answer. And frequency is an indication of an object's color. So if you change the frequency, you change its color. So obviously the correct answer for this has got to be the speed. We can find that here. The N, the index of refraction, absolute index of refraction for a material, is uh, uh, what the material is. And it's the ratio of the speed of light in a vacuum, C, to the speed of light in the new material. So when light goes into a material and it's bent, it's because it's changing its velocity. So we were right. Question 29. The speed of light in a piece of plastic is 2 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. What is the absolute index of refraction? Well, that was the formula we just mentioned earlier. N is C divided by V. So the N, the absolute index of refraction, is the speed of light in a vacuum divided by the speed of light in the material. And the speed of light in a vacuum is 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second divided by 2 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. So it's 3 divided by 2, which I think is like 1.5. There we go. All right, question 30. Wave X is traveling eastward with frequency F and an amplitude A. So I'm drawing down here, and you can't see me. Roto S, X, traveling eastward with frequency F and amplitude A. Wave, wave Y, traveling in the same medium, interacts with wave X and produces a standing wave. Well, in order for there to be a standing wave, we did a lab where you sat in the hallways with a big slinky, and you stood in one place and you swung it, and your lab partner was on the other end of the hallway, and you set up a standing wave. And what was happening was a wave was bouncing and interfering with its reflected wave. So for standing waves to occur, they have to have the same frequency, and they have to have the same amplitude, just going in the opposite direction. So let's see if that's one of the choices they give us. Which statement about, y, a statement about wave Y is true? Wave Y must have this, a frequency of F, yes, an amplitude of, and be traveling eastward. Well, that's the same direction. That's not going to happen. Have a frequency of 2F. That's not true. Wave Y must have a frequency of 3F. That's not going to happen. I hope this last one is it. Wave Y must have a frequency of F, an amplitude of A, and be traveling westward, the opposite direction. There we go. It's always nice to know what answer you're looking for before you go look for it.